Okay, so we're going to actually try um, these online lectures. We'll see how this goes. Um, we might not even have to meet at all for class, depending on how everybody does with the Brightspace material. It's going to be kind of a weird time for a little while, getting used to the new format for this class, but it's just something that we're going to have to do. Um, so I'm just going to start with this new lecture here that we're going to be doing chapter 11. It's called Design Principles. Um, kind of goes over graphic design and other types of design out there. Um, so we're going to start off with that, um, the story of the Saks Fifth Avenue department store. They've been open since 1924, um, and they already had a really strong brand um, at the beginning of the 21st century, so 2000s. Um, but they wanted to rebrand um, at this time in the early 2000s um, at the turn of the 21st century. So um, they recruited Michael um, Beirut of the graphic design firm Pentagram. Um, and he actually kind of renovated the logo. So he was able to kind of innovate the logo, attract younger customers because of this without alienating the old one, the older customers by actually taking um, the company's logo that they already had and then just kind of slicing it up into 64 different pieces and then recombining it in different random ways, which actually looks really modern. Um, and you can actually, so, and the logo is still recognizable because of that, because they use the same logo, they just sliced it up and then put it together in different ways. Um, and they don't always use all 64 square pieces of the logo. They might combine just three of them, depending on what type of product they're putting it on. Um, if there's enough time or if there's enough room for more slices, I'm sure they probably put, you know, more slices on a larger bag. If they have a smaller bag, they might only put, you know, three slices on it. So um, that's kind of the story of, of that Saks Fifth Avenue. Um, and I'll actually show it here. I can get this to go to the next slide. Here we go. So um, here it is. And you can see um, this one, this, this bag actually seems to have four or five um, probably five here, different um, squares of the logo here, and then four running up. So it actually has 20 squares on it. This one only has six on it, and it's actually a larger bag. So um, as you can see, they just kind of randomly put it together. Actually kind of a cool, cool design. This is the actually the older logo here that they took, and they actually reversed it and put white on black background, and then, like I said, sliced it up and they use it in different ways depending on what item they're putting it on. Kind of a revolutionary, very modern approach to a logo redesign. Sorry for that. I'm gonna try and remember to change the slides differently. Um, so graphic design is probably the most frequent type of design you will encounter in your daily life. Um, it's not like fine art. With fine art, you actually go to a gallery and like seek it out. Um, with graphic design, we just end up seeing it without actually meaning to see it. Um, and because of this, designers really do have a lot of opportunity to attract, inform, persuade, bore, or repel large numbers of people out there and um, really big audience for graphic designers. Um, and graphic design re refers to the process of working with words and pictures to enhance visual communication. Um, so it can be you know, designing materials for print, such as like books, magazines, posters, and it can also be um, designing materials for the screen, so like websites, um, social media ads, that kind of thing. Um, and they can go, the book mentions something about, you know, it can go from posted stamps to um, magazine pages to websites, apps. There's a pretty big spread of things. Um, that graphic designers can do. And one of the things that graphic design does is it uses symbols, type, color, illustration, and designers, graphic designers produce visual compositions with these things, and it, they're meant to attract, inform, or persuade a certain audience. Um, so we're going to move into typography next. Um, and this is the art of and technique of creating a composition using letter forms. And it can actually refer to the actual design of the letter forms as well. So if you're designing a typeface, um, 
you know, it can actually refer, typography can actually refer to the design of a typeface or, you know, the letter forms within that typeface. Um, and a complete set of letter forms, including capitals, lower cases, numerals, accent marks, that's all called a typeface. And today we actually call it font, fonts as well. Actually, you're probably going to hear of people calling it a font more than they will a typeface. The, type, the word typeface is really starting to uh, be replaced by the word font. Um, so, you know, back in the day, people had to write words by hand or they used a typewriter, and most typewriters had the same typeface, um, which they didn't even know what the name of it was. Most of the people that used it didn't know the name of it. Um, and so the font choices were really limited. Um, but since we've invented the computer, we've been able to get a lot more typefaces and it makes it really easy to select from a large list of fonts and create documents that really can look very professional. Sorry, I keep on doing that. Um, <clears throat> so the Chinese invented woodblock printing and we actually kind of went over that a little bit earlier in class. Um, they invented woodblock printing in the 11th century. They invented um, wooden movable type, wooden movable type. Um, and since then, like, especially since the advent of the computer, there's been thousands of typefaces um, created. And there's Roman letters, um, and these are based on the capital letters carved in stone by the early Romans. And the strokes of these letters end in a serif, and a serif is kind of just a short, pointed, um, little end that comes out an angle at an angle from the main stroke of the letter um, and also roman um, is used to mean not italic um, in typesetting that might be one of the questions on your quiz i'm not totally sure but i figure i should put that in there um, and then sans serifs have no serif and they have more of a modern look because they're actually, well, they have origins that are old, but they were designed relatively recently. Um, okay, I just did it again. I get used to changing the slide differently. Sorry, guys. It take me a little while to get used to this. Um, so this is some examples of serif and sans serif. So these, um, this right here is a serif. Um, this is Playfair Display the F on the left there. The next F is Montserrat. This is a sans serif. So as you can see on the end of the F there aren't these little, um, you know, there aren't little ends. Like on, on the serif fonts they actually have like a little, I don't know what you would call it, but a little thing that comes out from an angle. Um, here's some more serifs here. They're circled on this T, this green T. And then there's a sans serif um, green tea here. And as you can see, there's nothing on the ends of this font. So that's the kind of the visual difference between um, serif and sans serif fonts. So uh, many type designers are redesigning and updating old fonts. Um, Donald Meeker did this with um, the Clearview Highway typeface. Um, and he basically took, you know, those signs when you're on the freeway, they're usually green and white, but um, they actually wanted to improve the legibility of that font. And so they actually used the existing font that was used traditionally on those signs as a starting point. And then they just um, kind of made a few changes to it to make it more uh, readable. So they made the spaces and the lowercase le letters um, like the E's and the A's, those little spaces that are in an E and an A, they actually made that space larger so that your eye can pick them out better. Um, and they made a bunch of other subtle changes. Um, they added a base to the lowercase L, um, which is almost like a little serif that they added to it. Um, and that made it more legible. It's basically, if you look at this font, you can see that it's actually kind of a hybrid between um, Let's see, between um, serif and sans serif fonts. So um, you can see this the, the lowercase l in Boulevard has that little serif on the end. The A actually has kind of a little bit of a, a serif on it, um, which actually makes that a little bit more legible. Your eye can pick that little um, 
thing up, that little serif up better, and actually recognize that A. And the, you know, the spaces in the O, the P, the A, the E have all been made larger so that you can really see. And there's even kind of a little bit of like a, a serif on the end of the T, you know, at the, at the T. Because if it didn't have this, it would just go straight down and end here. Uh, anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting that it's sort of a, a hybrid between serif and sans serif font. Um, so the it, I think it just took the most the most readable or legible elements of from each serif and sans serif font and combined them together to make a really highly legible typeface. And then here's some um, the examples of. Um, some of the things, the clear view, highway typeface, um, it's the development of it basically. Um, so how they changed the A, you know, and then they added that little boop at the end to make it actually more recognizable by the eye, probably at a larger distance. And they actually made that space and that A larger, more pronounced, more exaggerated. And they actually even made this space a little bit more exaggerated. The R is basically the same. Um, they did add a little bit of difference here, a little bit more rounded um, there, but for the most part, pretty interesting. So this example is by Heidi Cody. Um, I'm gonna, sorry, put this in slideshow mode. Um, and it's from 2000 and it's basically the full set of 26 letters from the American um, alphabet. And it's actually called American alphabet. It's from the year 2000. Um, and she basically kind of just took, um, you know, letters borrowed from various corporate logos and she created the American alphabet with it. Um, so basically right here we can see this C is probably the C from Coca-Cola. Um, I think this L is the Lysol L. Uh, I think I recognize this R as being the Reese's um, peanut butter cup R, and this is Starburst S. Um, not quite sure what a lot of these other things are, because I think from since 2000, a lot of these have been possibly rebranded, so they're not exactly the same as they used to be. I think this might be the O from Oreo. Um, so anyways, she kind of, she's kind of trying to get the viewers to acknowledge how branded these various letter forms are, so how much... Um, Branding really does affect um, these letter forms. And see this E here is actually ego. That's from egos. Um, so I guess we're basically out of time for this video. Um, so I'll start up a new one here in a minute. I'm just going to start, I'm just going to get this one, wrap this one up and we'll start the next one.